in my last video, I was flying my Zorro flying wing and it fell out of the sky because the speed controller pretty much caught fire. When I came to repair it, it turned out that not only the speed controller burnt out, but so had the motor. It was all black inside. I assume one caused the other to burn out. It may have even happened thanks to something that happened in the previous crash. Uh, so anyway, it's now sporting a nice Emax 2205, 2300 KB uh, quad motor, very similar replacement, and a 30 amp Aerostar ESC that came out of my bush mule. And it's flying again very nicely now. And the one thing you will notice is there's no horrible lines across the picture, which there has been the previous two times I've put some DVR footage up of this plane. So it's going to be fair to say that there was something wrong or at least crappy with either the speed controller or the motor anyway that was constantly interfering with the video. Sorry for all the wobbles, but it was a very uh, gusty afternoon and the wing was wobbling around all over the place. That's my excuse also for the landing, which was supposed to be a nice smooth landing right next to all right next to me. But, uh, but it wasn't. Never mind. eh? Then I went to go up for a few flights with my diatone mini quad. So I did a power loop, a flip, and was just turning round here over the boundary of the field when, well, that's the end of flight screen. Basically, it fail safed and fell right into a hedge. Now, I knew at the time this was not going to be good because the hedge there is a bit more than an ordinary hedge. Anyway, I packed up and uh, went over to try and get it. Okay, it's landed in this very thick hedge. The hedge is, I don't know, a few meters thick in places. But, you know, if you look, it's not just a, a normal hedge. And uh, over a horrible ditch. It only looks low because I'm standing on this uh, big pile of earth here. I can hear it. I've tried poking things around. I can't see anything come up on the camera. Uh, it's raining as well, so. Uh, I'm going to do something very foolish and go down there and try and find it. Well, it did take quite a long time from now going both sides of the hedge, trying even to spot the wretched thing. Although I could hear it uh, quite clearly, the brambles and hedge and other things were just so thick that I just could not see it. And I was really starting to think. Uh, especially given how far in it was, that it was going to have to be abandoned. But I mean, come on, it costs a lot of money. So you've got to give it a go, haven't you? So as I stand in the middle of a bramble bush, basically leaning on a metal rod, finally I do pop it slightly further down than I thought, slightly further over than I thought. So uh, hopefully it's more accessible from the other side so I can go around and see. I was quite worried at times that this was taking me so long the battery would actually run out and then I'd lose the beeper altogether. In the end I went back round the other side of the hedge. Uh, to be honest it was just as far whichever way you went and uh, it was pretty much impenetrable with all the brambles and, uh, and, and hedge. I just couldn't get in. Eventually I went a metre or so to one side and managed to climb into the muddy ditch, uh, work my way along, and then it turned out there was an old wall inside all that hedge that I was able to climb up. It was painstaking and painful, in fact, um, but uh, finally... Well, finally, I've got to it. I'm about that far from that field. About that far from that field and I'm pretty surrounded and I think I got a few cuts despite wearing whatever protective clothing I had in the car and some more work gloves. So now I can reach it, I've just got to get out. Once I got back to the car and actually stopped sweating I thought I would at least fly the quad again just to see if it was all okay. Uh, so I went off in, as you can see, stabilised mode and literally just potted around making sure it all sounded good and seemed to fly all right. Then popped into acro mode and just had a little bit of gentle flying. Okay, maybe not quite so gentle uh, around just to be sure it was okay. And uh, it seemed fine. But then I noticed that when I did a couple of loops, the amp draw was really, really high. I mean, if you watch this now, 
that was 53. And that was more than the previous propellers, despite having tried to fit lower pitch props to reduce the amp draw. Um, so I thought, well, perhaps I'll try again and see what it peaks at. So out over the middle of the field, just in case, full power pull up. I briefly saw 77 amps there, and 77 amps is crazy on a quad like uh, like this. Uh, that's the moment I realized that there's definitely, uh, these are not the right props for it. And in fact, on RC groups, somebody did say, don't run bullnose props. They are not efficient, but I hadn't quite realized uh, the extent of the problem. So certainly now it won't fly till two things have happened. A, I've purchased some Oh, there's a little aeroplane there. Uh, firstly, till I've purchased some good quality props that are pitched not much over four. And uh, secondly, until I can understand the black box, what it's trying to tell me uh, as to why, for the second time, my quads just decided to turn off and fall out of the sky. That's all for now.